My name is Liliana Sharko. I am lecturer at the Faculty of Economy in the University of Tirana in Albania. During this short webinar, I will present some basic methods used in decision making regarding the risk control test. First, I am explaining the risk control activities that should be undertaken in the context of risk management process, and then the application of two financial analyses cost-benefit analysis and capital budgeting in deciding on the proper risk control techniques to be. Risk control refers to the measures taken by an organization that avoid a risk or reduce the severity or the frequency of losses. The risk control techniques include avoidance, which means that the risk is abandoned, prevention, which refers to the measures that reduce the loss frequency, Reduction, which refers to the measures that reduce the loss severity. Diversification, which reduces the risk by spreading loss exposures among different parties. Duplication and separation. Large business organizations often employ loss control engineers and experts to identify sources of loss and to plan and implement corrective measures. For example, Injuries during work can derive from the poor conditions of workplace, lack of safety measures or improperly training of the workforce. Proper loss control programs can be designed and implemented by the risk manager to obtain the required object. Avoidance refers to the decision of a firm not to exposure to a particular risk of loss. For example, product liability suits can be avoided when a drug company decides to interrupt the production of certain drugs with dangerous side effects. Through avoidance, the chance of loss is reduced to zero or eliminated as the activity or the property given rise to the possibility of loss is abandoned. Generally, avoidance is recommended to be employed when the loss exposure to the risk is both severe and frequent, which means a loss is expected to occur often and when it occurs, it causes large damages. But often, avoidance can be impractical to be used, or impossible to be used because some losses cannot be avoided. Ideally, risk manager would like to eliminate the risk. But, as above mentioned, it is not always practical and possible. Loss prevention refers to the measures taken to reduce the frequency of loss. Numerous activities reduce expected loss by reducing the frequency of losses. For example, measures that reduce the number of auto accidents include zero tolerance for alcohol and drug abuse, enforcement of safety rules, construction of appropriate barriers, lighting and road signs in highways. While loss reduction refers to the measures that reduce the potential severity of loss. Despite the loss prevention measures, some losses occur. Loss reduction techniques aim to minimize the magnitude of the loss. For example, installation of an automatic fire sprinkler system will not reduce the probability of loss, but it reduces the amount of damage if fire occurs. Loss reduction activities may occur before and after loss. Pre-loss activities refer to measures taken before loss occurs. For example, installation of first aid boxes or airbag systems in the cars. Post loss reduction activities refer to the measures taken immediately after the loss occurs. For example, rehabilitation of workers with job related injuries. Disaster planning constitutes a pre loss reduction activity. The plans for evacuation, medical treatment, sheltering, power restoration aim to reduce the severity of losses from catastrophes. Diversification refers to the measures taken to reduce the chance of loss by spreading loss exposure across different parties and places. Therefore, diversification is used to minimize several types of risk, such as financial, production, and liability risk. For example, an investor may reduce the investment risk by investing in several securities issued by several businesses operating in different businesses. Duplication refers to the measures taken to keep backups or copies of an existing asset in reserve 
to be used in case that the original set is damaged or destroyed. Examples include installing information and business records on a backup server to use in case the original server is out of use. Separation refers to the measures taken to isolate the loss exposures from each other or to divide the assets exposed to loss in order to minimize the damage caused from the loss. For example, a company may divide a store in inventory in two separate warehouses in order to minimize the losses if one of the building is destroyed. Business organizations reduce the probability of being sued under product liability law by designing, manufacturing, and marketing safe products. Selling safe products means that the business should spend money and time to test the products for a longer time period, to place the warning labels in the dangerous products, and to use the quality control check systems. On the other hand, reducing the number of lawsuits, the business will experience a cut in the legal fees and in the compensation paid to the injured parties, as well as the company's reputation will be less affected. Therefore, the risk control activities are not costless. In deciding upon the proper loss control activities, the risk manager must compare the cost of loss control measures and the benefits expected to be derived. Only when the benefits exceed the cost, the activity must be undertaken. Financial analysis can be employed to assist in risk control decision making. There are several tools at disposal of the risk manager, but this webinar illustrates two of them cost-benefit analysis, and capital budgeting. Loss control measures are effective only if the benefits realized from fewer occurrences of losses are greater than the cost of the loss control measures. Let's suppose that one company must decide how much to spend on the safety equipment for its plant. Risk manager has evaluated that if the company spends nothing on safety equipment, the expected number of injured workers will be 20. If it spends 25,000 euro, the number of the injuries will be decreased to 60. If the firm spends 25,000 euro more, the number will decrease to 30, and so on, as the slide shows. The expected average loss to the injured workers is calculated to be 10,000 euro. If the firm spends nothing on safety equipment, it will have to pay. 200,000 euro as compensation to the injured workers. But if the firm spends 25,000 euro, the indemnification amount would be 160,000 euro, which means that it will be reduced by 40,000 euro. As long as the benefit exceeds the cost, the firm is willing to undertake the investment. If the firm spends an additional amount of 25,000 euro, the indemnification amount will be reduced by 30,000 euro. Again, the benefits are larger than the cost, and the firm will make the investment of 50,000 euro. The table shows the additional benefit and additional cost for each level of investment. Additional benefit is called marginal benefit, and additional cost is, mar is called marginal cost in the table. The company will stop to invest when the marginal cost exceeds the marginal benefit. As the table shows, the firm will invest only 50,000 euro because if the, firm is, if the firm invests more than 50,000 euro, the marginal cost of 25,000 euro exceeds the marginal benefit of 20,000 euro. Hence, the optimal investment level is 50,000 euro. Risk control be analyzed through the capital budgeting method by employing time value of money testing. This technique is useful when the cash inflows or outflows have been distributed over a period of time in the future. Capital budgeting is a process that analyzes the investment alternatives and selects the most appropriate investment that should be undertaken. There are several discounting methods employed in capital budgeting, but for risk control decisions, this presentation considers two of them, the net present value and the internal rate of return. Both methods consider the time value of money technique, 
recognize that investment decisions are made at the present and the cash flows are generated in the future. Compare the investments cash shared flows with future cash flows, bringing them in present values. In context of flows control activities, the investment flows constitutes the cash outflow, while the reduction of future payments constitutes the cash inflows. The net present value is the sum of the present values of future cash inflows minus present value of the investments cost. The present value of the cash flows is usually calculated by discounting them at the firm's weighted average cost of capital. If net present value is positive or zero, the investment is accepted. If net present value is negative, the investment is rejected. The internal rate of return method determines the rate of return which equal the present value of the cash inflows and the present value of the cash outflows of the investment. This rate of return is called the internal rate of return because it's a rate that is unique to the investment. In effect, the, rate, the internal rate of return method satisfies the equation present investment cost equal to present value of the cash and flows. The investment is accepted if the internal rate of return exceeds or is equal to the firm's capital cost. If the internal rate of return is smaller than the capital cost, the investment is rejected. Let's suppose that there is a manager of a drug company who would like to reduce the number of liability lawsuits from the clients. He discovered that the reason is the untrained workforce. In collaboration with Human Resources Office, they developed a training program with a training agency. The training program costs 20,000 euro, and the risk manager has calculated that the expected indemnification for the next five years would be reduced by 5,000 euro. If the firm's weighted average capital cost is 6%, should the risk manager accept the investment proposal? The cash outflow, outflow of this investment is the investment cost of 20,000 euro and the cash inflow is a series of periodic amounts of 5,000 euro which is the amount by which the indemnification payments will be reduced in the next five years. If the cost of capital is 6%, the present value of the investment is the sum of the present value of each cash flow discounted at 6%. The present value of the cash inflows for the next five years discounted at 6% is 21,062 euro. Since the cost of investment is 20,000 euro, the net present value of the investment is 1,062 euro. As the net present value is positive, the risk manager will accept the proposal. It means that the reduction in the future payments exceeds the cost of the investment, measured both in present terms. Regarding the internal rate return method, risk manager finds that the rate of return at which the present value of 5,000 euro per year for five years is equal to 20,000 euro. Therefore, the internal rate of return is the rate of return that satisfies the question presented in the slide. The equation is solved for the unknown term R, which is the internal rate of return. Using interest factor tables or financial calculators, the problem is easily solved. The rate of return we satisfy the equation is 7.3%. This means that the internal rate of return of the investment is 7.3%. As the internal rate of return is greater than the firm's cost of capital, the investment proposal is accepted according to the internal rate of return method. The net present value of the internal rate of return methods are very similar. They consider the time value of money technique and include calculations the whole cash flow generated from investment. In the above example, this, the investment is accepted by both methods. However, these two methods do not always agree on whether an investment should be accepted or not. This is the subject of a more advanced discussion which is not covered in this presentation. At the business faces risk and the general attitude of individuals and business firms is risk aversion. Risk manager has, has several techniques at disposal to reduce the risk faced by organization. 
he can choose to control the risk or to finance it. In both cases, the risk manager process is not costless. In deciding upon the proof of loss control activities, the risk manager should compare the cost of loss control measures and the benefits accepted to be derived. Only when the benefits exceed the cost, the control activity must be undertaken. For this purpose, risk manager can employ the cost-benefit analysis and the methods of capital budgeting process. Both methods compare the amount of benefit from reducing the risk and the amount of money needed to carry out the technique. The methods of capital budgeting can be used when the costs and the benefits are spread over a period of time in the future, and hence they use the technique of time value of money.